Hello, my cookies. Welcome. Welcome to Russell Cooks. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today, we have Sopa Seca. Now, this is like a Mexican casserole dish. It's delicious. It's phenomenal. It incorporates a couple different cooking techniques that I want to highlight and also really bold flavors. Sopa Seca, which translates literally into dry soup, uses something called fideos. There's two different types. There are some that are short, and there's some that are curly. I'm using the short ones today. Those are the ones you wanna use. It's essentially broken up pieces of spaghetti. So if you can't find them, you could always use spaghetti, like a thin spaghetti and break them up. And you wanna get them to one to two inch pieces. So now that we know what we're doing, let's gather our ingredients. You are going to need about three cups chicken broth, about a pound and a half of Roma or plum tomatoes, some garlic, dried oregano, canned chipotles in adobo, fideos that I talked about. Now these are labeled egg noodles, fine, same difference. You're gonna need an onion, you're gonna need salt, and then for our toppings, which is the best part, you're gonna need some sour cream and lime, lime juice, some queso fresco, avocado, cilantro, and if you're feeling a little extra randy, some chicarones, which is uh, fried pork skins. Now that we've gathered our ingredients, let's get cooking. Another great part about this recipe is if you're feeling like you want it to be a soup, you can absolutely do that. Just add a little bit more chicken broth and get yourself a soup, my friend. I have a medium-sized onion. I'm just gonna do a relatively fine dice. I'm gonna shoot for a quarter inch, but if it ends up being a little bit bigger, so be it. All right, for the tomatoes, I'm just gonna kind of dice these up. You don't have to be exact. We're gonna puree this. They're gonna go in with my onions, so I'm just gonna put them on the same plate here. All right, so for this, you're gonna need about a quarter cup of oil, and then you're gonna need a little bit more to cook the veg. So over here, I have my Dutch oven. Got about a quarter cup of oil in there. I'm gonna heat it over medium heat. Now, depending on your stove, you might need to drop it to medium low. Next up, I am gonna add my fideos and I'm gonna toast them. Now, this is a trick to make sure that they don't blow out and turn super mushy. You can actually use something similar to this if you ever wanted to make pasta in your slow cooker. Yes, it is possible. You can also, as opposed to toasting these in a pan, use a microwave, toss them with oil, microwave them at 50% power and just toss them. And what it's going to do is it's going to kind of set some of those proteins. So it's still gonna absorb liquid. They're not gonna be completely blown out. They're still gonna have some structure and that's what we really wanna do here. I'm just gonna cook them and toast them. It's gonna take four to five minutes. You want them to start kind of getting light and toasty, maybe even a little golden brown. You're also gonna need some garlic, two to three cloves of garlic. I prefer three. These are all pretty tiny. You don't even need to mince them up. You just need to smash them. Don't take your eyes off the fideos though. Four to five minutes, toast them up. And I use 12 ounces of fideos because that's the size the bag came in. If you get a bag of eight ounces or a pound and you want to scale it down, you can. If you want to scale it up, you can as well. And you can kind of see some of these are getting a little golden brown. That's perfect. They're not all going to be golden brown or whatnot. A 50-50, you're probably really close. So that's what I'm looking for. I think my fideos are looking pretty good here. I'm gonna take them off the heat. I'm gonna put them into a bowl and just let them sit. They're gonna continue cooking a little bit. So if you pull them out a little early, that's always ideal than too late because there's some carryover cooking here. And if there's a few left, there's a few left. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of oil into here now. And I'm gonna put my onions and tomatoes. They're gonna go straight in. So I'm gonna maintain my medium heat and I'm gonna cook my onions and tomatoes until they're softened and the tomatoes have released a bunch of juice. That's gonna be about eight minutes. So while that's stewing, let's get some of our toppings out of the way. Now, if you wanted to, you could have saved some of your onion, sprinkled them on raw. Otherwise, I'm just gonna do a bunch of cilantro and some queso fresco, cut up my avocado. For my queso fresco, I'm gonna do about two ounces. Cilantro, maybe a quarter cup to a third cup chopped. The other thing I like about it is you can really make it your own. So if you wanna do something else or you wanna adjust the spice tolerance or you wanna make it a soup, you can. It's so easy to manipulate and make it whatever you want it to be. Tomatoes are about halfway through cooking. I am now gonna add my smashed garlic. Just get it in there. You can probably add it right at the start. I like to give it a little less time. All right, I'm also gonna add my oregano. I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of this dried oregano. You are gonna need a blender as well. Didn't mention that at the start. Let's do my uh, avocado here. 
All right, we're getting close here. Tomatoes are breaking down. It's nice, but I still want to make sure that that onion is cooked through and the tomatoes are starting to turn a little savory. So it's going to be about one more minute here. Tomatoes are cooked through. We're going to get it in our blender. So for my chipotles and adobo, you can add, you know, like a whole pepper if you want some adobo. This is already cut up. I'm going to add maybe half a tablespoon. Uh, you can absolutely spice it up if you want or spice it down by not adding any if you think your kids will eat this. All right, we're also gonna add about a half a teaspoon of salt and our three cups chicken broth. All right, let's get it going. All right, now this is gonna be super frothy. So it'll add a little bit of volume that way, but you wanna shoot for seven, seven and a half cups of liquid. You can adjust with additional chicken broth if you need it. So I am going to put this back in my pot. I'm gonna stir in my fideos. I'm going to do medium high heat. I'm going to bring it up to a simmer, cover it, drop it down and cook it. All right. It has come to a simmer. So I'm going to drop the heat and I'm going to cover it. And then you got to let it cook until the fideos have absorbed all the liquid. And that's going to take 20 to 25 minutes. I'm going to give it a stir every five minutes or so. Just to make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom. All right. We got a little bit of stick in here. So I'm just going to stir and scrape up. I got a little sticking on the bottom here. Should have stirred more often. All right, here we go. It's been about 20 minutes. As you can see, the fideos have absorbed a bunch of the liquid. This is perfect. They've kept their shape. This isn't mashed potatoes right now. It's super saucy. You can cook it down a little bit more if you want to dry it out, but for the most part, I think we're looking just good. Let's plate it up. Voila, look at this. It's kind of like a risotto, losing out a little bit, fighting to stay up, but losing the match. This is exactly what you want. Let's get our toppings going. Okay, so fresco on this, look at that. We'll do a little bit of cilantro here. If you wanna do a hit of sour cream, you could, some lime. Let's dig in here. I totally forgot to do the chicarones. All right, it's fresh, it's bright. You get a little bit of that toasted pasta, those fideos, the toastiness. That's like your baseline. And then you build off of it. You get a little bit of the onion in this. It's not oniony. You have taken that harshness out of the onions when we stewed them with the tomatoes and the tomato comes in, but it's not tomato sauce tomato. It's been stewing for a while. It's like almost a cross between savory and fresh and bright. And it's got a little bit of acidity still in there. So it's nice. That lime helps too. And then right on the back end, you get that smoky chipotle spice. Let's get some chicharrones in there. Mmm, porky richness. That is good. All right, that was Sopa Seca. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget, follow me on YouTube and Twitch if you like what you saw. I'm also on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Take care.